It's a major alert. I'm your host, Steve Van Meter, and thanks for joining me today. And our lead story today, a complete freeze on all stock sales has been announced. And this is coming at a time where we're seeing a global equity route that could lead to a massive correction, if not all out bear market. And one major exchange in this country is looking to put a halt to that. We'll show you the real reason why they're doing this and why more exchanges are likely to follow suit. Now, let's head over to Bloomberg, where we picked today straight up with a headline. It's China to stop publishing daily global stock flows in mid-August. And this is part of the catalyst of what's going on in China as they're trying to put a halt to the decline in their stock market. The first step is covering up information. The decision, which was hinted at in April and made explicit by the country's stock exchanges on Friday, Follows a move in May to end data on intraday flows through trading links with Hong Kong. Investors will lose the ability to calculate net flows at the end of each trading day from August 18th. And this is being done deliberately because they don't want people to know where flows are moving. Of course, what we know, and I'm going to show you the exchanges are cutting down on the selling in a major way by putting a halt to it. But if you don't know what's going on in the market and you can curb selling, well, it gives investors a reason to believe that maybe the bottom is in, and even though it's not. Starting from the August deadline, the combined data on so-called northbound flows into individual stocks will only be made available quarterly, again, four times a year. And this is crazy, as data on the holdings of global investors and individual stocks will also be released on the fifth trading day of each quarter for the close of previous period. So here you see there's a big move in China to curb the information flow on what's going on with their equity markets. Again, this is being done deliberately because the next major move as you're about to see is a curbing of selling but one thing we think is going to move a whole lot higher well we just flagged this on a report to our subscriber and what we found was something that is sitting at its 10 year low can you believe this as everybody is looking at tech stocks melting down we found one of the biggest gems in the market and you just have to subscribe to find out and how do we do that well we look at two ways one is our CTA Timer Pro. This is the machine positioning, and we screen the machine's positioning each and every day across a broad range of equity, bond, commodity, and currency markets. We look for when they're in deep, short positions, and when price moves against them, we flag that to our subscribers. We also look at momentum on a separate report. We take those signals like the RSI and the MACD. When you find out you get in late and out early, well, what happens, you'll turn to Momentum Timer Pro, where we look at the signals over multiple time scales because we aggregate them together with a proprietary overlay. When momentum changes, it flags us. And in this case, because we scan such a wide range of securities every day, we found a huge gem. You don't want to miss out. And here's the best part. You can find out what that is for free. You get the daily reports, the tradable signals. I give you my opinion on them every day. We give you the stop loss levels. We track the trades and the returns, and we update the stop loss levels each and every weekend. Here's the best part. You can get that free trial by following the links in the description below, because now let's head back to China, where we find out the latest retreat from disclosure follows attempts by Chinese policymakers to prop up faltering confidence among local investors which has been battered by an outflow of global funds so this is just one way if you can confuse everybody by blocking the data that they can access so they can't see outflows well that means they're working on a very limited amount of data of course what this is all being done is to give chinese investors confidence to buy stocks i'm going to show you why this matters in such a big way because despite the coming into the daily data Data, investors will still be able to gauge the direction of fund flows into Chinese stocks through quarterly reports. But that isn't much. And even on top of that, the data is often subject to a lag of at least a month, has been prone to unexplained delays, which is no surprise in China, because now they're cracking down on selling because this is an all out emergency in China. We note that their property market, they're seeing demand plummet like crazy. This is putting huge pressure on the banks, which are over leveraged to the housing market, the economy around the world slowing, demand for Chinese produced goods is slowing both externally and internally. 
Their whole economy is about to head into a massive crisis, and this is going to take the market down with them, and Beijing is looking to put an end to that quick. As China cracks down on short sales, quants, and hope to boost stocks, and now the regulator there has approved the CSFC to halt stock lending operations. It's an all-out ban, and Chinese authorities, along with counterparts in South Korea and Thailand, have been among the most aggressive in Asia in restricting short sales and quantitative trading strategies in attempt to bolster share prices. Yet the moves have done little to address the root causes of weak markets, which in China include persistent concerns about its housing crisis, renewed trade tensions, and low consumer confidence. And so that's exactly kind of the narrative here. When you see consumer confidence fall, and we'll look at another chart of this, it has a great relationship with global equity markets because, of course, when consumers are not feeling confident, they don't spend, it back feeds right into the equity markets. Under the new rules, investors will need to put down a margin deposit equivalent to 100% of the value of securities they seek to borrow for short selling. Until the change, the ratio had been at least 80%. And in the short term, this will trigger the closing of existing short positions and limit the new opening of short selling activities, putting out an all-out ban by making it too difficult to short the market. And of course, this leaves the A-share Chinese market still performing on economic fundamentals and corporate earnings, which of course, we we know are only going to get worse. And so what we're seeing happening in China is the same issue we're seeing all around the world. And then today, that's right, on Saturday, the Chinese government just rolled out an action plan on boosting domestic consumption as the state council designates 20 steps to help the flagging economy. And you can see what a panic move this is because they're doing it on a weekend. This is dangerous. It's telling us the Chinese economy is about to play into an abyss, but it's too late. The policymakers waited too long. And let's look at the effects of what the stock market does on demand. And here we can see that advanced retail sales, as we look to the U.S. data here in blue, as shown on a year-over-year -year rate of change, against the NASDAQ 100. And what we can note is that as the equity markets decline, and we can see that event, what happens is retail sales go down because this is about the wealth effect. As consumers feel less wealthy, they tend to spend less, and the next thing you know, it just back feeds into itself as less demand means less, of course, revenue and profits for companies, which in turn leads to lower stock prices and more investors wanting to sell. And this, of course, has everything to do with confidence. When consumers lose confidence in the economy, well, falling stock prices doesn't help. And you can see here, as consumer sentiment shown by the University of Michigan survey declines, well, it usually follows a decline in the stock market, as you see heading into the dot-com bubble. And again, in the global financial crisis, here in the midst of what was almost a global recession, we see confidence dipped, stocks went flat. And this relationship happened again between 2021 and 2022. Of course, we note the relationship to the upside as stocks rallied, consumers got confident. This time, confidence is heading down and there's nothing that appears in the short term that's going to put a stop to that, which is one of the big reasons why we're seeing a decline in the U.S. equity markets here. And then you look to what China's doing. They're trying to instill confidence in their traders by saying, look, we're going to curb short selling here. No one's going to be able to do this because it's too expensive. It's an all-out implicit ban. And then on top of that, we're not going to give you the data on who's selling because we want you to come in here and buy. And if you can boost our equity markets. It'll give consumers confidence and hopefully they'll go out to the stores and shop until it doesn't work at all. As China's government on Saturday laid out its priorities to spur consumer spending, as weak domestic demand continues to weigh on growth. And by September, we're going to find out that global central bankers are going to be afraid of the same thing, looking to cut policy rates perhaps more than most people expect today. The state council of China's cabinet designated 20 key steps, including exploring the potential to expand basic consumption in areas such as catering, home services, and elder care. They're going to look to juice the economy because it's too little, too late. They're already plunging to the downside. We're starting to see this now in the U.S. as we are now confirmed in the early stages of recession. The problem is governments and policymakers are still fixated on inflation, and that's keeping them from the real issue here is that economies are about to come crashing down all at once.
And the country's economic growth unexpectedly slowed to the worst pace in five quarters in data released in July as faltering consumer spending undermined a boom in exports. And you see that faltering consumer spending now here in the U.S. And that triggered calls for policymakers to unleash government support to help Beijing hit its annual growth goal of about 5% for this year, which is unlikely. But you start to think about why they're having so many problems there. It's because, of course, what we noted is central bankers inverted the yield curves and money curves. They constricted the creation of credit. And then what Beijing did is they pumped money into the flailing housing market when demand fell apart. This is leaving some experts in China to call for all-out stimulus. And here you can see a member of the PBOC's Monetary Policy Committee just made a bold statement. Keep in mind, it's just an advisory role. He said, quote, if the Chinese economy falls into the trap of low inflation, the consequences will be severe. Therefore, we should set a hard target of 2 to 3% CPI growth and shift our policy preference from investment to consumption. I agree with that. We should confidently adopt fiscal measures to support consumption, such as allowing migrant workers to settle into cities and get this, directly sending money to households. That's right, the Chinese government here now being told by their advisory board to consider helicopter money. But if you wanna understand why we're likely to see more banning on selling by exchanges, and what we have to do is look to one of America's wealthiest and well-known investors, because when he sells, well, people take notice. And Berkshire Hathaway cut their apple stake by almost half in selling spree, but that's not the only thing Warren Buffett's selling. He was unloading shares as the S&P 500 stock index rallied, setting a record high in mid-July, though the index has declined in each of the past three weeks, on concern that artificial intelligence euphoria had gotten well overdone. On Friday, the week labor data underscored the risk of an economic downturn, with the Fed being too late and having no tools to stop the downward move. You could conclude this is another sell signal. This was far higher level of selling activity than we were expecting, and that's the issue here. But it's not, again, only Apple. Berkshire Hathaway has also been pairing back its Bank of America stake as, of course, it trimmed that by 8.8% since mid-July. As we know, that Warren Buffett now turning away from Apple. Of course, big demand from their products. If that drops, that means their stock is headed down. But the bank's in danger. He's bailed them out before but now looking to get out on the top. So you start to get the narrative here of why we're likely to see exchanges banning selling in the future, because looking around the world, what do we see? As Canada's retail sales slump as high rates weigh on shoppers, look at this, receipts for retailers fare 0.3% in June, which followed a 0.8% drop in May, and that is an issue we're seeing here in the US. We know that consumers are spending less, and I'm gonna show you a chart to value validate that here in a moment as the report shows that consumers are cutting back on discretionary purchases which include furniture electronics and sporting goods while the bank of canada cut its key policy rate to 4.75 percent last month restrictive policy is weighing on canadians has everything to do with a lack of credit and Canadians' consumer spending continues to struggle with the impact of past rate hikes and higher living costs. And this runs counter to robust, resilient U.S. retail sales report that is going to look ugly coming forward because here's why. As we take a look at U.S. advanced retail sales against total compensation, that is in the form of average hourly earnings multiplied by average weekly hours of production and non-supervisory employees. That's shown in red both on a year-on-year -year rate of change and what you can see is as we total compensation decelerates in the form of lower raises. That's what we saw in the recent payroll report, only a 0.2% month over month increase and in hours worked got cut. So as we see total compensation fall, what happens is consumers have less spending power and in turn they spend less, which leads to, of course, a further decline in demand and less total compensation growth. And we see this event happening over and over again. And now we see a big drop in total compensation growth with previously matched a big drop in retail sales and we know based on what we're hearing from mcdonald's burger king wendy's taco bell walmart 
Target, you name it, they're all saying demand is plunging. And we can look over to UK now as retail store traffic falls as shoppers opt for holidays, or at least that's the hope because the odds are they're not. The number of people entering stores fell 3.3% in July from a year ago, which exceeded the 2.3% decline a month before. And this is something we recently covered in a show on Wendy's, who said that their same store traffic was down as well. Consumers spending more who go there, but actually the number, the volume declining. It's clear the long tail of cost of living crisis is continuing to rattle consumer confidence and is likely to prompt spending caution for some time to come, which means stocks are going to continue their downside move. We're likely to see more big players like Warren Buffett selling. And then what you're seeing in China with a ban on short selling is likely to spread to other exchanges as governments do whatever it takes to keep equity markets from plunging into an all out bear market. Because when that happens, what we know is consumer spending drops and economies go into a massive crisis. And that's with that, I'm Steve Van Meter. Thanks for watching. Thanks for being fans. Bye now.